everybody, I'm Elizabeth Hines from Our Paleo Family and today we're making butternut squash soup. It's Super Bowl Sunday, um, so I know this is coming to you too late for this particular um, Super Bowl, but I know a lot of people um, have pizza and wings and that kind of stuff for Super Bowl and other people play up the soup part of the name and my son actually requested this for Super Bowl Sunday. Usually butternut squash soup is our Thanksgiving Day lunch because I can make it the day before and it's just a little bit of a light lunch on um, the big day while we're waiting for our big meal in the evening. Um, but anyway, it's cold and dreary and it's a perfect day for soup. Super Bowl, Thanksgiving, whatever day it is. So um, there are quite a few ways you can start working with a butternut squash. You can buy it uh, frozen in chunks which will be peeled chunks and that would be a great time saving way for you to work with butternut squash but I can't find it in my local stores. Um, a lot of grocery stores are now starting to carry, uh, carry it in their produce section fresh again cubed and peeled and everything or even spiralized into noodles which I think would be delicious. Um, they charge a premium for those products and also um, some vitamins are very volatile and when you cut up the vegetable you lose some of them and vitamin C is one of those and so if you care about keeping as many vitamins as possible in your fruits and vegetables then working with them in their most whole state is ideal so there's just that do with that information what you will um, I like this method working with a whole squash one for the nutrient value but also um, it's less expensive and I don't mind doing it. So you have several choices then what you're going to do with this. Some people put it in the microwave, some people cook it in the oven, um, some people peel it and chop it. So you have lots of choices and I'm going to tell you the way I work with a butternut squash because I think it's the easiest and that is I washed this, it had a label on it so we took the label off and we scrubbed it and I'm just going to take, I would not normally use this big of a knife, but I have it here. So just take a knife and poke a few holes in it so um, steam can escape. I have my oven on 375 and I'm going to bake it like this for probably 20 minutes to a half an hour until it's soft enough that I can cut it in half without hurting myself. This is basically the same thing I do with a spaghetti squash. And then I got an Instant Pot and I cook my spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot now. But I always start with it whole because they're so hard to work with. And it took me almost an hour to break down a butternut squash from this raw state. I'm like, it is just not worth it. So clean it, poke a few holes in it, stick it in the oven, and just bake it until you can cut it in half. So that is step one. My oven's on 375 because that's my desired temperature for this. I'm not baking anything else. If you had something else in the oven that needed to go in at 350 or 400, it's all fine. Um, I just choose a moderate temperature. I want it to roast or bake slowly. So I'm going to set that aside for just a second while my oven is coming up to temperature. And the other thing I'm going to get started are my caramelized onions. So I just have one um, sort of medium sized sweet onion. I'm just going to peel that and chop it. And you can caramelize this in whatever cooking fat you like. So if I were not doing a Whole30, I would use some grass-fed butter. But I'm doing a Whole30 right now, which means no dairy. So I'm going to use some clarified butter that I have made myself. And ghee and clarified butter are very similar. They're prepared in, in somewhat of a different fashion. And both of them are essentially the butter is cooked and the milk solids are removed. So you're left with just the butter oil which is generally considered to be free of um, the parts of the dairy that are irritating to a lot of people. And I don't like the taste of ghee. Nobody in my family likes the taste of ghee. So when I ran out of it, I decided to make clarified butter and see if I like that better. Um, and here's my little empty jar, one stick of um, grass-fed butter processed into um, clarified butter and it lasted us a week. It was very yummy. I cooked my eggs in it all week. I cooked vegetables in it. It was delicious. And so we're going to cook our onions in it as well. So my recipe calls for three tablespoons and I, I don't have three tablespoons. I might have a tablespoon and a half. But I have another stick of butter on the stove. Um, so I'll be able to add to this um, 
once that's done. So I'm just going to start my caramelized onions and again there are lots of ways of doing this. There are lots of shortcuts. Google how to make caramelized onion, onions and you'll find lots and lots of recipes. But I'm going to give you the way I like to do it best and it is not a shortcut. It is very um, long and slow and you just put your burner on as low as it goes and you probably need to use a less powerful burner so you don't want to use your most powerful because even the low will be too high and um, let them cook. So I just uh, made mine into little sort of half moons here because at the end of this soup making process we're going to blend everything up so you don't have to worry about a real fine chop. So just um, throw your onions in there with your ghee or your um, avocado oil, whatever kind of um, cooking fat you want to use, bacon fat would be delicious. It would add um, that bacony flavor. A little salt and pepper, get it on low and let those cook. I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to show you um, the clarified butter too. So mine has just started so I can't demonstrate a lot but basically you put your butter in the pot on low, as low as it'll go and don't stir it. Just let it sit there and it will start to bubble a little bit and simmer and the milk solids, which are white, will rise to the top and you just skim them off and discard them. And so you skim them off and it will bubble a little bit more and you will keep skimming it off until you'll see, um, you can see how this is cloudy right now, it will be clear, it will look like oil and then you have your desired product. And then just for like an extra level of insurance that you've gotten all the milk solids out, you can strain it through some cheesecloth and that will get any little bits that you didn't get out with your spoon. So again, this is a little bit of a lengthy process. Um, it took me about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes before, because again, it's slow, you can't rush it, and um, you'll have your own homemade clarified butter that will taste delicious. Okay, so my butternut squash is going in the oven. I'm making my ghee, I've got my onions caramelizing, and I'm actually making broth because we need broth for our soup, and I was out. So I've got all the parts going, and I will be back when we're ready for the next step. Thanks. And let me just show you what I mean with the clarified butter. That white, which you think, oh, that's just, you know, bubbles or foam, that's actually the milk solids. And you can carefully just skim along the top don't get your face down in there because it will pop and whenever you move it like this it, it will pop um, a pan with lower sides is ideal makes it easier to do this skimming however if the butter pops like you can see what that's doing um, you're more likely to have it pop on you so the higher sides are a little less convenient but safer so already at this point you can tell a big difference in how cloudy it was when we started and how it's mostly clear now but you can still see some of those milk solids are on the bottom. They'll just continue to come to the top and we'll keep going through this process until it's completely clear and I'll show you that. And let's just look at the caramelized onions too. So I have these on low. It smells great. We're getting some color, but they're not burning. I've not added sugar to make them caramelize. There's plenty of sugar in them naturally, and they will um, get nice and soft and dark brown if given time. Okay, so just let me show you the finished product of my um, clarified butter. And there's a little bit of uh, milk solid still in the bottom that have browned, I can see just because I was sharing my kitchen and couldn't get back in here exactly when I wanted, but that's totally fine. I hope you can see a difference between what this looked like at the beginning and what it looks like now. I'm just going to skim this last little bit off the top, not worrying too much about it, you know, a tiny little bit. And I have a bowl, a fine mesh strainer, and a piece of cheesecloth. I'm actually going to double that over in attempt to just pour this directly down over that center spot. So 
then you simply remove this. This is weird, I haven't had this before. So there's just a little bit of foam right there on top. So I'm just going to scoop that off. I don't know if that's just bubbles or if that's actually some milk solids that didn't happen when I did it before. That's all right. I'll just take it off. One nice thing about this, since you have removed the milk solids, you don't have to refrigerate your clarified butter. And then into the jar it goes, and I will use this later in my cooking today for my wings, for finishing up the butternut squash. Get every bit of that, okay? Yum, yum, and it tastes great. All right, get this out of the way. Okay, my squash has been in the oven for about a half an hour. And I forgot to tell you this, but I hope you noticed. I just have this large um, rimmed baking sheet and lined it with a piece of parchment. And now that my squash has been baking, I can actually cut it. So this fatter end is the end where the seeds are, which means it's effectively hollow in the middle. I'm going to take it off of here. So it's always easier to cut through that fatter side. And then this is the dense, um, fully squashed side. But even cutting through this stem in, much, much easier than it was before we baked it for a little while. So cut all the way through. And then I go ahead and take the seeds out at this point. You don't have to, but I just choose to. And you just want to be able to hold your squash still. It's hot. And I feel like butternut squash, all that fiber stuff scoops out a lot easier than uh, spaghetti squash or pumpkin. So yay for the butternut squash. Just kind of run right around that fibrous, stringy stuff. If you get into a little bit of the flush, it's okay. But you want to get that out. And at this point, we're just going to cook. We're going to bake it until it's done. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, um, this sort of darker color. It's more cooked than in the center. You can tell by how it looks. It'll cook on this, um, this section where the seeds were faster than the other section, obviously, because it's thinner. But it's fine. Just leave the whole thing in the oven just like that. And so this will probably take um, about 30 more minutes. So in my recipe, I'm going to give a lot of ranges in terms of the times and the amounts because, uh, for example, the broth, how much broth it takes, one is dependent on do you want your soup really thick or do you want it a little bit thinner, and also how big is your butternut squash. There are some huge ones and there are tiny ones. So um, you have to use your judgment, okay? And the same goes with the cooking time. I can say bake it for 20 minutes, but yours might not be done in 20 minutes, okay? So you just have to cook it until it's done. And I'll show you how to tell when it's done. But for now, back in the oven he goes. And while we're at it, I'll just give you a shot of my caramelized onions. So these have been going for um, the whole time that the squash has been in the oven. And they smell great, but I want them all nice and brown and soft. So they're going to keep on cooking. So they'll just go back on the stove and they'll keep cooking the whole time my butternut squash is baking. Okay, see you in a few for the next step. Hey there, everybody. So it took um, in total about an hour and 15 minutes to bake this squash. And I'm, I can touch it because it's been sitting on my counter for a little while, um, which I've had the time today. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon, um, which is the kind of day I like to make this kind of thing so I don't feel rushed. But I'm waiting on my Instant Pot to finish my chicken broth. So I had time to let it sit here so I can handle this pretty easily. But do you see how easily my knife goes through here? That's how I know my squash is done. Now remember, this fat end is where the seeds were, so the, the flesh wasn't quite as thick. Um, but down here, the more meaty part, 
it's done too. So if you are in a little bit of a hurry, you don't have to, and you want to use my baking method, you're going to start with a whole squash and you're going to bake it like I've done. You do not have to bake it until it's completely um, cooked all the way through like this. You can get it to, just to the point where you can handle it and then you can cut it up. Um, now when it's completely baked, it'll the, the skin will come away pretty easily. When it's not um, yet finished, it'll be a little bit harder to get the skin off. So just bear that in mind. Um, but if it's not completely baked from your time in the oven, just let it simmer in the pot with your, I've got my caramelized onions in there, and I'm going to add broth in just a few minutes. You can just let it simmer and it will finish cooking. So at this point my squash is cooked and I could blend it at any time. I'm going to get everything in this pot. I'm going to put in some salt and pepper, but I, I want to wait until I taste my broth because I don't want to over season my soup. Um, I just have two simple little extra spices besides salt and pepper that I'm going to add to this. They are cinnamon and sage. And again, the amount just depends on your taste, really, and how big your squash is, like we talked about before. This is kind of like if you ever bake a bunch of sweet potatoes or yams for Thanksgiving, um, then the flesh will just sort of peel right away. It's actually a teeny bit easier if you do it before it cools quite as much as mine has because um, I don't know why, but the skin kind of gets stuck back to the flesh. So we just go through this process of getting all the skin off. That little root end is going to be tough, so we'll just leave that. Butternut squash tastes a lot like pumpkin. So and, and actually acorn squash has a similar flavor as well. So if you wanted to make this soup and you wanted to avoid all of this work of dealing with the butternut squash, you could just open yourself up a couple cans of pumpkin, um, caramelize your onions, you know, start the same way there, but then add your canned pumpkin, um, your, your really good quality, tasty chicken broth, you know, any kind of soup any recipe really, where broth is a fairly uh, large component, the flavor of your soup depends on the flavor of your broth. So you really need good broth. In this particular week, we go through a lot of broth um, and I ran out and so I usually keep a, a carton of some store-bought broth in my pantry and I had to use it this week and man, I really miss my homemade broth actually bought a rotisserie chicken yesterday just so I could make some broth real quick. So we haven't been, I haven't cooked bone-in um, chicken for a while, so I didn't have any parts. I usually just keep all that stuff in the freezer so I can save up, save up all my bones and things and then make broth when I have enough. Anywho, have, have some good broth. Speaking of which, there goes my Instant Pot. Now, when I make broth in the Instant Pot, which is the only way I make it these days, um, I let the pressure come down naturally. But because it is super full, it takes a long time, I mean, well over an hour. And I'm not gonna wait for that today. I'll give it about a half an hour and then I will manually release the rest of that pressure. Because we're having Super Bowl tonight and we've got to get on with our menu, so I apologize for the mess in here, but we're cooking a bunch of yummy stuff. I'm actually doing a Whole30 right now, and I did a post on this, and, and I know today's Super Bowl Sunday, so you're, you're hearing this after the Super Bowl, but as I was thinking about, gosh, you know, what are we gonna have for Super Bowl that will be Whole30 compliant? So I have a whole bunch of paleo recipes, or primal, um, but something like the Super Bowl, we would, we would step outside of our paleo world and have some dairy. Um, but I came up with a lot of recipes, so I have a whole post about that. So um, I tell you that simply because it's, you know, when we talk about Super Bowl food, we're really just talking about party food. And you, 
people have parties all throughout the year. So if you're doing a Whole30 or maybe you have a guest who's coming to your party who is doing Whole30 or some other sort of elimination diet, um, check out my Super Bowl and Whole30 posts because I have lots of options for you there that um, are delicious and will work perfectly fine. Um, so here's my squash. I'm going to add my spices, my cinnamon and sage and just put this on the stove and wait until I can add my broth in. Hi there, so at this point we're just ready to blend our soup and then season it to taste and then let it simmer till you're ready to eat. So I have about half of my squash and onions. You know, I, as I peel the squash, I put it in here with my caramelized onions. Um, so now I want my pot empty because I'm gonna blend it and pour that in. So I've taken about half of it and put it in this bowl just so I didn't overfill my blender. I have three cups of broth that just came out of my Instant Pot. So I'm just putting enough liquid in to be able to blend this mixture well. You could use a food processor, you could use an immersion blender. I'm simply using a standard blender because I think most people have a blender. Um, so I like to show you tools that I think you know are accessible to most people. So my broth is really hot so I'm just going to make sure I vent that. So I can see that it slowed down. I'm gonna add a little bit more broth. By all means, you could leave this with some lumps in it, or you can make it totally smooth. I like it totally smooth. I did taste my broth before I put it in here, and it is actually um, very well seasoned. So I'm I'm absolutely gonna taste this mixture all together before I add any salt and pepper. So my sage and my cinnamon are in here, but I'm not gonna add any salt and pepper until I have um, the whole shebang in here and can taste it together. So again, here's just the rest of my squash and onions. I like a contrast in texture with my food. So I'm making this soup really smooth, but we're gonna add a crunchy element by browning some sausage and then we'll serve a little sausage on top so it adds kind of a salty um uh <laughs> what's the word uh, like a counterpoint a salty counterpoint to the sweet squash and also that crunchy element to the smooth and i forgot to put the broth in there i was so busy trying to get my vocabulary words out so Another cup or so. I think that's probably good. So there is one more ingredient to add that I forgot about, and that is some coconut milk. And you don't have to add that. If you can eat dairy, you can certainly add heavy cream. That would be more traditional. But to keep this paleo, we're going to add coconut milk. And I don't really like the flavor of coconut in my savory foods. And um, it, you can't taste it in this soup. At least not with the brand that I'm using, which is Native Forest. I'll show it to you in a minute. So I'm just wiping this off because I don't like to waste. And you can see the little flecks of my caramelized onion in there. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so as you can see, my soup is really thick. I definitely want to thin that out some. And I am going to use some coconut milk, like I said. And again, just use however much you want. But here's my Native Forest um, original. And I used part of the cream and part of the liquid actually for another recipe. So I want to scoop some of the cream. I want about a quarter to a third of a cup total. And again, this is really just to add some extra richness to our soup. It's not going to do a whole lot to thin it out because I'm primarily adding the creamy part and not the watery part. 
get a little bit of that in there. Okay. And then I'm going to just put this on my stove, let it simmer, and continue to add broth and salt and pepper until it tastes the way I like. And when I'm ready to serve, I'm going to brown up my sausage. Whoops. Throw my spat my whisk right in the pot. Um, and if you get the whisk in your bowl, then you get the prize. Just kidding. Um, and then this can just simmer until we're ready to serve, and I'll show that to you. I'll show you the final product in just a little bit. Okay, soup's done. Once we blended our soup, I just had it simmering on low on my, um, my burner and tasted it periodically. I needed to add a little bit of salt. I didn't want to add too much pepper because I have spicy sausage. And then I just browned up a pound of sausage. So um, I have a recipe on my website for just a simple sausage. You buy ground pork and you add the spices to it. Or you can find one that you like at the store that's made with good quality meat. Not a lot of sugar and that kind of stuff. So this is how we serve it up. This is about how I like my soup. It's pretty thick, which is typical butternut squash. I used three full cups of broth in mine. You might like a little more, you might like a little less. So we just spoon that up, top it with a little of our browned sausage, or if you're my son, a lot of the browned sausage. And that's it. Let me give her a taste. Mmm. It's delicious. The sweet squash, spicy sausage, creamy, crispy. It's perfect. It's great for a cold winter night, a fall day. You can have it in the summer if you want to. I don't care. Butternut squash full of vitamins. And this is totally um, paleo. Whole 30. Um, not autoimmune paleo because of all the spices in the sausage, but you could leave that out and just go with the soup as it is and have yourself a delicious hearty meal. So, happy um, Super Bowl Sunday, everybody. See you next time.